Hey there, hope all is well. Back at today with another what's hot in the news. So today I came across an article and the very title itself caught my attention because it mentioned about the world's worst currency having a slight rebound of about 3.6% in gains against the dollar, but yet when it's down over 50% in the last several months, is that really much of a gain? So today I have just one article I wanna share with you all in relations to what's labeled as the world's worst currency, and it so happens to be the Argentina peso, which has now is trading about 45 pesos to $1. And over the last several years, Due to a lot of failed monetary policy as well as political corruption, the country of Argentina, which is a naturally rich country, is having a lot of issues. But yet I think that it's something that we can learn a lot from in the fact that we're all under the same monetary experiment of the central banking issuing too much paper, which ultimately comes back to hurt those to say. But before I dive any further, you can find out more information from this article in the video description below. So let's dive into that article. So before I actually dive into the article from Bloomberg here, I want to give you an actual idea of what it looks like to have a currency that is slowly but surely heading towards its intrinsic value of zero. So here we have the pairing between the United States dollar and the Argentinian peso here. And as we see over the last 10 years, since 2010, where the dollar exchange ratio was about 3.8 pesos for one single dollar, over the last several years, it's been incrementally creeping up until it reached a point in about 2013, where it went to eight pesos for one dollar. Then ever since then, due to monetary policy, due to the, a lot of corruption there in the government, a lot of internal issues there, it's been increasing even at a faster pace here to where now we have another drop off where it went from roughly 10 to about 13 within about a year and a half here to where now it's been fluctuating but steadily trending down towards its intrinsic value of zero. As of today, it's trading about 45.8 pesos to one single dollar. But yet we see how within a decade, since the Great Recession, this currency here has become more and more problematic for the 40 plus million citizens in Argentina. But imagine and put yourself in a position of those 40 million of people there who are all dependent upon working, saving, and investing with the currency that is becoming a part of a failed monetary experiment. Very first article here is from Bloomberg, and it says, World's Worst Currency Rebounds as Central Bank Overhauls Policy. So the very word rebounds is what's caught my attention. Me having followed Argentina for quite some time now, when we're talking about a rebound, I'm thinking it's going to be something substantial. But according to this article here, it was a measly 3.6% gain against the dollar, which to me, I'm sure if I was in that country, wouldn't be too promising overall. But I'll thumb through this and give you a little bit of what's going on. It says, Argentina's peso rallied Monday after the central bank said it would step up intervention in the currency market. The fourth change to policy in six weeks following last week's market collapse. And so here we have four changes in six weeks. And so what would be so important to continue to change if you knew what you were doing right away? If you knew what you were doing if you knew what you were doing initially. But to me, when I see four changes in six weeks, that lets me know that perhaps these particular central bankers here, as well as all the rest of the central banks, may not necessarily know what they're doing. It says the peso, the world's worst performing currency this year, gained 3.6% to close Monday at 44.33 per dollar. Interesting. The central bank said it would start to sell dollars to stabilize the peso, overturning a previous pledge not to intervene if the currency remained within a limited trading ban. So here we have the government of Argentina having recently borrowed money from the IMF, approximately 50 billion or so, and they were initially told that they were not able to support their own currency, that they were allowed to float freely in the open market, so that it can stabilize itself against other currencies. But it looks like something's changed to where the Argentinian government will intervene in trying to stabilize the price as best they can. But ultimately what they're doing is selling their reserves to prop up a currency which will inevitably fail. So that's definitely not some policy that I think that's well thought out. It says the policy shift came after the currency hit a record low last week and bonds fell deep to distressed territory. So as of last week, when it hit an all-time low is when they decided they need to do something. So here we have whatever it takes. It says Argentina Central Bank has tweaked monetary policy four times in six weeks. And so it looks like every time it dips, they tweak it. And so here we have four... <laughs> Four interventions by the Central Bank of Argentina there, all amidst all the type of protests and riots and the pension situation, the retirement situations they're having there, all in relation to a currency that's failing the people. And as Argentina heads into the whole presidential election, here we have 
Macri's government is pulling out all the stops to revive his approval ratings and re-election chances amid Argentina's second recession of his presidency. So it looks like the current fiscal policy that's going to be implemented along with this monetary policy is all to basically put him in favorable position for a re-election, of which it looks like he's already had two recessions during his presidency. But ultimately what he's doing is selling out his own country because all they're doing is borrowing, basically stay in power for hopefully another term. So this is what's happening in the news in relation to the country of Argentina, what's labeled as the world's worst currency. And so what's similar to what every other nation is also experiencing is that the country of Argentina is a naturally rich environment with a thriving agricultural base there, but because of the corruption at all levels, whether it be the government or the central bank there, they have indebted and enslaved their own people with these loans from the IMF, as well as having made too many promises in the form of free healthcare, free schooling, and all those things that are labeled as entitlements there, which have begun to choke the very lifeline out of their economy there to the point where now that only can function based upon debt. And so every other country, in my opinion, is also tied into those type of similar practices, which ultimately lead to more money printing, which is not much different than what we're doing here in the United States of America. So I wanted to share what was going on in Argentina because I think it's something we all can learn from because as it says here, over the last year, the currency has lost 50% of its purchasing power. So put yourself in the shoes of an Argentinian citizen. And if you weren't prepared or aware of how the monetary policies impact your life, you would have been one on the losing end of the stick, holding on to paper, which has stole wealth from those who hold on to them too long, especially when your government is continuing to print them at a very alarming rate. So other than that, I would love to hear your thoughts on this Argentinian crisis here. How bad do you think it will get? Do you think it would touch hyperinflation, like in Venezuela, as well as in Zimbabwe? Leave your comments down below. I would love to find out more of your thoughts. Other than that, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks.